One of my more infamous videos now is when I talked about Warhammer 40k because various right-wing YouTubers made responses to it when I was relatively still small on YouTube. I believe I didn't even have 10k. So what normally happens when you are a small YouTuber and you get like a video made on you by a much bigger channel like Arch or Arch Warhammer as some of you may know him is that your comments just get completely flooded by their fans and your videos get bombarded with dislikes and you can't really fight back against it but now of course I'm a lot bigger than I was back then. I have a far larger audience and I thought it would be good to go back to this topic, but not just because I want to. It's also very, very relevant again, because there's been a recent scandal in Warhammer 40k in Spain, which even prompted Games Workshop themselves to come out of a statement talking about how the Imperium is actually satire, which is what people got so mad at me for saying in my last video, and that how they are the bad guys, essentially, and they shouldn't be idealised by people because they are fascists. But just like something like Starship Troopers, a lot of conservatives and people on the far right don't understand satire and instead think, oh cool, look at these armies, look at these militaries. I won't read into the subtext, I just like the aesthetics of it. So today what we're going to talk about is the backlash to my first video, the recent drama, and the problems with the far right in the Warhammer 40k community itself. Now before we go any further, I want to plug my social medias and Patreon for about one minute. Timestamps in the description, so skip that if you're not interested. Before we get any further, a lot of my work on this channel is demonetized because when you're covering more serious, sometimes edgier topics, YouTube doesn't like this. So if you've ever enjoyed my work, please consider becoming a patron. And you don't have to pledge a crazy amount. I want to build up my Patreon based on as many people as possible pledging little amounts, like a dollar or two. So if you know you feel like I have ever brought anything that's worthwhile into your life and my content, please really consider becoming a patron to help me continue to do this, regardless of if YouTube monetize or not most of my videos in a given month. Also, if you want to join our communities, come check out our Discord and my subreddit. Those links in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, please check out the Cavernacle at Twitter, at Instagram, and also my personal Reddit where you can keep up to date with all my content and what I'm doing. We hit 50k recently for every 5k, I get a new chocolate orange. Maybe we could possibly get one more before the end of the year. My goal for the end of the year was just 50k. But because the channel is still growing right at this very moment, let's push for 55. That would be a nice way to end the year. I also live stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday, and that stuff is archived on the Cavernacle Extra. So I made a video in summer 2020 titled Why the Warhammer 40k Community Has a Nazi Problem, Arch Slash Games Workshop. Now, generally the reception to this video was actually pretty good for a long, long time. But then Arch himself, formerly known as Arch Warhammer, streamed himself watching my video. So I think my video was like 15 minutes long and he made a two hour, 15 minute video of him watching my original videos. I seem to be very popular with a certain element of right-wing YouTuber who are in essence total losers who have nothing better to do than sit around with like between two to about six other losers going through my videos and while my video might only be 20 minutes long, they often make live streams between three to five hours. Can you imagine having that much spare time where you can watch a YouTube video that is under half an hour with a bunch of other men and talk about it for hours and hours and hours? And it really is so, so incredibly sad. And it's actually just quite embarrassing. Like, imagine telling any normal person you do this. But anyway, Archer's video got 27k views, 1.7k likes. But of course, what happens when stuff like this is done? They all came to my video and I got ratioed and my video now has 1.3k likes 
and 3.3k dislikes. I'd say that's probably one of my most disliked videos, along with the Moon Man one, but the context is very different for that, because when you type in Moon Man, my video comes up because all Moon Man content is essentially banned off YouTube, whereas this one is just someone directing their followers essentially to my channel. Now, I actually find it quite bizarre he even chose to live stream my video because I literally show screenshots of him using racial slurs in his own Discord. And this guy often claims that he's not on the far right. Again, I found this really strange. But of course, what sort of people flock to my videos to tell me how wrong I was? Well, my video title was talking about the Nazi problem, but here's someone saying, implying it's a problem. Someone else saying, wait, why is it a problem? Another person with an SS logo in their profile? What a crock. Oh, they can't even say it. Go cry to the ADL. I wonder why they say the ADL and no other organization. As if it's not bad enough of them attacking Steam and gaming in general. Another person with a lightning strike and Oswald Mosley in their profile picture saying, where is the problem though? So essentially, I didn't try and become part of the Warhammer 40k community. I really have no interest in Warhammer apart from some of the games look interesting and some of the upcoming video games look interesting. But in terms of like the miniature and the game and everything, I really don't care about it and I'm not going to play it and I don't claim to be an expert on it. But with my content, I often cover reactionaries, people on the far right. And because this community has such a visible problem with it, mainly because one of the most popular factions is, of course, a fascist group, but it's a satire of fascism, but so many people have taken it literally. I found that quite interesting in regards to like my other analysis of like pop culture and media. But before we move on to the recent controversy, I just wanted to talk about why I was even discussing this stuff in the first place and why I was discussing this arch guy who's a prominent Warhammer YouTuber. So this article by Vice in August 2020, the Warhammer 40k community is trying to weed out its far right faction. So it talks about Arch in the article and it says, some in the 40k community felt Games Workshop should not have made a statement at all. One such member is Norway based YouTuber Arch, known as Arch Warhammer until a recent trademark dispute with Games Workshop prompted a name change. He launched an email campaign in July urging 200,000 plus subscribers to email Games Workshop and tell them to keep the politics out. Arch says he does not identify as a member of the far right and insists that he was genuinely not aware of any alt-right or fascist section of the 40k community. Ironic for a guy who uses loads of slurs in his discord. Rather, he takes the view that Games Workshop's statement was tantamount to an align itself with extremists who support communism and he says advocate for violence. This is the same kind of dog whistling that we hear about the alt-right where they talk about some of their code phrases. This seems to me to be a signal to a very group of extreme people. What my campaign is saying is that Warhammer is for everyone, full stop. And what I found really funny is that his fans got so triggered in the comments that I said basically nearly every anti-communist is a racist, which I totally stand by. Most anti-communism in history has been heavily motivated by racism, originally against Jewish people, then against Slavic people, then of course against Chinese people and various Asian groups, the Vietnamese as well. In America, anti-communism was heavily motivated by racism against African Americans and Jewish people as well. But going on with the article, two months ago, screenshots from Arch's Discord server were posted on Sig Marxism, which is a cool subreddit, a left-wing Warhammer subreddit. Multiple people had used racial slurs while Arch himself referred to the Sami people and indigenous people of Northern Scandinavia as gypsy but worse. The article just talks about him using slurs in his video, talking about white lives matter. When asked about this language, Arch tells the guy who wrote the article he doesn't really concern himself with how extremists interpret his speech and that he will continue to allow jokes. So this guy is like highly, highly political, but then he goes on to say something like this. If you are the most extreme tanky or the most extreme fascist, if you simply want to play a game of 40K, not talk about your politics, simply collect the miniatures, I do not view that as Games Workshop's duty to stop it. I view that as the rest of society's duty to debate against these people and to prevent them via public discourse and the public opinion. Arch and a lot of his fans say, people like me see fascists everywhere. We see fascists where they don't exist. But not only do we know from his own community and their comments on my video 
that there is a problem with these groups in Warhammer 40k. There's also been a recent controversy which proves there is a problem with this stuff. So an article by James Whitbrook goes through this. So we're going to go through the scandal today, go through Games Workshop's response to this, and then we're going to talk about how they themselves may have brought this on themselves because of the way they often market the Imperium faction. The article says, earlier this month, the GT Talavera Warhammer tournament, a major competitive event in the Spanish wargaming community calendar, but not one officially organized by Games Workshop, found itself mired in controversy when an entrant allegedly under the pseudonym Pinto Austriaco, Spanish for Austrian painter, a thinly veiled reference to Hitler, participated in the game while wearing clothing depicting Nazi imagery, and here it is, up on screen for you, pretty clear. Organizers of GT Talavera allegedly ignored player complaints to remove the neo-Nazi from play, even purportedly awarding them wins when other competitors withdrew rather than play against someone unironically wearing fascist imagery. After the controversy gained ground in the English language Warhammer community in the last few weeks, the organizers provided a statement to the tabletop gaming site Spiky Bits declaring its stance against fascism in all forms, but defending its decision to allow this fascist to keep participating in their tournament in order to avoid committing a crime of ideological discrimination. So here is their response to this stuff. And they said, first of all, I would like to make it clear that the club repudiates the Nazi mentality in all its aspects. We are a club made up of people with different political ideas, different religions, and from different countries, which our passion unites by Warhammer 40k. With this, I think you will understand that Nazi ideas have a no place in our group because they are contrary to everything we stand for. English is not the first language of the person who released this statement, by the way. The facts were the following. During the second day of the tournament, one of the participants showed up wearing clothes with Nazi symbols. One of his opponents refused to play against him and demanded that we expel him from the tournament. Two members of the organization met alone with the player in the clothing, exposing him to the situation and our dissatisfaction with him showing his symbolism. This individual replied he had no problem in playing against anyone and that he had behaved correctly throughout the tournament, but if we wanted to expel him, he would call the police. At this point, we want to emphasize that in Spain, it's not a crime to display these symbols as long as it's not accompanied by criminal conduct. Instead, if the organization expels this person for his ideas, it is the organization that is committing a crime of ideological discrimination and it could perfectly denounce us and would have the law on his side. At that moment, we find ourselves tied hand and foot. Once reached that point, if any player does not play their game, the opponent automatically wins it 20-0. It is something very unpleasant, but in such a difficult situation, we believed we had to follow the rules of the tournament and emphasize that the organizers were the most upset with the situation that they were forced to take. These types of people are professional provocateurs who know perfectly how far they can tighten the rope without having legal consequences. In this case, the person behaves correctly at all times, leaving us without, without weapons to expel him by not having criminal behavior. We have taken note and in future editions, we will write legal tools in the tournament bases that allow us to expel people like this with the law on our parts. In the 10 years that we've been playing tournaments, we have never faced such unpleasant situation and did not realize that it would be necessary until now, which we deeply regret. We would like to let you know that all these emails are born from a harassment campaign that we have received from groups of people with animosity towards the club and the event. I'm sorry if this statement has been too long, but I think it's important to clean the image of the event of all these falsehoods. Since we are a group of friends who only get together to carry out a tournament for others to enjoy without any profit in it, these situations make us wonder if it is really worth spending so much effort and time that we stop being with our families that can be so easily discredited and dirty. If any of you are from Spain, can you please let me know if their interpretation of this law, like if they stop this guy from playing and he called the police, would these guys be in a lot of legal trouble? Now, there's probably other solutions around this and just letting this guy continue and basically win by default because people don't want to play with someone like this. I find it hard to believe people have the legal right to play Warhammer at an independently hosted event. But anyway, if you're from Spain, please let me know. But then the statement goes on to state that the organization will modify rules for future tournaments to grant organizers the power to expel players in tournaments without the fear of legal reprisals, although the group did not clarify what steps it would take. But in a rare move, the controversy has seemingly led to Games Workshop releasing its own wider public statement about members of hate groups and their relationship to the world of Warhammer 40k. Now, it seems like this statement was prompted by this event, but it's like saying stuff more 
generally about these far right groups being in the 40k community. So everyone who thought I was like being ridiculous for even saying this like over a year ago, nearly a year and a half ago, seemed to have been vindicated and that video seemed to have aged quite well. But here it says the Imperium is driven by hate, Warhammer is not. There are no goodies in the Warhammer 40k universe, none, especially not the Imperium of Man. It's numberless legions of soldiers and zealots bludgeon their way across the galaxy, delivering death to anyone and anything that doesn't adhere to their blinkered view of purity. Almost every man and woman toils in misery either on the battlefield, where survival is measured in hours, or in the countless manufactoriums and hive slums that fuel the Imperial War Machine. All of this in slavish servitude to the living corpse of a god emperor whose commandments are best only half remembered, twisted by time and the fallibility of humanity. Warhammer 40k isn't just grimdark, it's the grimmest, darkest. The Imperium of Man stands as a cautionary tale of what could happen should the very worst of humanity's lust for power and extreme unyielding xenophobia set in. Like so many aspects of Warhammer 40k, the Imperium of Man is satirical. Something doesn't have to be wacky or laugh out loud funny to be satire. The derision in the settings amplification of a tyrannical genocidal regime turned up to 11. The Imperium is not an aspirational state outside of the in-universe perspectives of those who are slaves to its systems. It's a monstrous civilization and its monstrousness is plain for all to see. That said, certain real world hate groups and adherents of historical ideologies better left in the past sometimes seek to claim intellectual properties for their own enjoyment and to co-op them for their own agendas. We've said it before, but a reminder about what we believe in. We believe in and support a community united by shared values of mutual kindness and respect. Our fantasy settings are grim and dark, but that is not a reflection of who we are or how we feel the real world should be. We will never accept nor condone any form of prejudice, hatred or abuse in the company or in the Warhammer hobby. If you come to a games workshop event or store and behave to the contrary, including wearing symbols of real world hate groups, you will be asked to leave. We won't let you participate. We don't want your money. We don't want you in the Warhammer community. For those heroes out there running their own Warhammer events, we love for you to join us in this stance. So that is of course like a really, really strong statement. And just looking through like Arch's socials on YouTube, it doesn't seem like he's even spoke about this. Maybe because he feels like it's calling him out directly or people who like him. But like I was saying before, a lot of people do feel that Games Workshop has kind of brought this on itself with the fans loving the Imperium because of how they often market this faction. So the article goes on to say that by its very nature as a brand, Games Workshop has presented it all as marketable and approachable by kids and adults alike for decades. The Space Marines are a horrifyingly evil concept, but they are the public face of Games Workshop and Warhammer. They are the stars of video games. The imagery in the windows of every Games Workshop store inviting newcomers to play in action figures and Funko Pops. There are libraries of novels and comics written from their perspective as protagonists. They are the thing Games Workshop has pushed as they try to bring Warhammer to audiences beyond their dedicated tabletop players, appearing in short films and at the forefront of their transmedia projects. Treating factions the way Games Workshop has over the years is what has fostered elements of the community that see fascists thinking they have a place at the Warhammer table. It creates elements that ask if it's fair, if they're persecuted for wanting to paint a faction of soldiers, heavily inspired by real world military units in the regalia of the Wehrmacht, or ask if there can be such a thing as black space marines in canon. It allows popular content creators to spew hateful screeds left ignored by Games Workshop at large, or memes to proliferate the lovingly cast Donald Trump as Warhammer's God Emperor. Those elements are allowed to exist and have so for so long because the onus has long been on players themselves. They are the ones who protect their diverse communities from harm, precipitating and allowing far-right groups to claim Warhammer's fiction for their own aspirations. Explicitly calling to remove fascist players from its stores and tournaments is a necessary step, but it's only the first of many that needs to be addressed and years of its satire lacking in the clarity of purpose to not be mistaken as an acceptance of terrible evils. So the left wing Warhammer community did have some thoughts on this as well. So I just want to read one comment on one of the posts talking about this. Uh, so hand to you me to free saying, I think marketing is the key word here. I'm not very well versed in 40k law, but as far as I can tell, the setting per se is clearly a satire. No one in their best judgment would think the Imperium is supposed to be the good guys. The marketing on the other side disagrees. The Imperium is iconic, looks cool, and most of all is human, and because of that, relatable. So they became the face of the setting and, and lens through most of media's portray that universe. 
Most people are more likely to play a game where you're human blasting aliens and otherwise, except there's a gimmick because they can see themselves there. So most games, books and whatnot are going to portray humans as protagonists because of the law, product, intent they fight the other enemies and not their own system. So I guess most of the fault in all of this is the marketing and not some failure in the setting to make satire. So I actually touched on this on my video before, but I just want to play you a clip of me talking about the Imperium before we move on to like other problems in Warhammer. The problem really comes with the Imperium being the main human faction and a lot of the times when you have humans in a sci-fi universe, you automatically identify with the humans because of course we are humans, so if they're fighting aliens, you are sort of on their side. It's kind of like, you know, the Avatar films where of course, you know, the humans in that are the bad guys it's quite easy to identify with them, even the ones who are in the military. And when they have awesome tech, like these massive mechs and massive ships, people tend to, you know, gravitate towards them. So despite the humans in Warhammer being the bad guys, because they're a main faction, because they have cool armor, they have cool, you know, military tech, people gravitate towards them. Of course, you don't have to be a fascist to like the Imperium, the same way you don't have to be a fascist to like, you know, the cool technology of the Empire and Star Wars. But of course, if you are a fascist, you probably are going to lean more towards these guys and you're going to see them as the good guys. But just on screen quick, I'm going to put some images of the Imperium up. As you can see, their armor sort of appeals to this old, I guess, fascist iconography. It reminds me of people like Franco idealizing things like Philip II in Spain. Generally, yeah, it looks like fascist propaganda, a mixture of things like medieval knights and your yeah, general fascists from the 1940s and their armies. And while you can just respect the art and you can respect how these are cool, I'm gonna put some more stuff up. So this is how it's used by the alt-right. Here are some things with Trump, the God Emperor. Here are some more, you know, generally fascist uses of the artwork. Or of, of the figures, of the technology, basically showing how those of a fascist leaning will, of course, like this stuff. So just like things like Starship Troopers, or even some of the weird marketing for some of like the newer Star Wars movies, which I talked about in there, it's not surprising that these aesthetics often appeal to people on the far right. Like, generally, I don't find this aesthetic very cool, and people are saying like, well, the Germans did have awesome uniforms. I don't really, really get that. But it's something that people always, always say about these things. And in terms of these sci-fi universes, we'll always be able to relate to people like us. Even like when watching the new like Dune movie, of course you like relate more to like the Atreides because they're clearly inspired by like Europeans, far more similar to us as Western audiences than something like the Fremen. It feels like we're always going to automatically side with these groups but when you have people who maybe don't understand satire and they just like the aesthetics and then maybe they get into the lore a bit more and maybe don't see it as problematic as they should despite it being clear criticism of these fascist systems combined with the prominence of these alt-right members of the community then you do have a bit of a recipe for disaster in often radicalizing people so this whole issue in general ties quite nicely to my conservatives not understanding subtext, not understanding satire, in that often they watch something like, you know, Dune I recently mentioned, or just generally other works of art, which either criticize the system they believe in, or is making fun of the system they believe in, or is making fun of authoritarianism or fascism, and they often cannot understand it. So Ben Shapiro and other conservatives talk about how great a movie Dune was, even though it's clearly meant to be like a criticism of settler colonialism, which someone like Ben Shapiro advocates for in Israel and in America. It's also very inspired by Muslim revolutions against European colonialists, a religion that Ben Shapiro really, really doesn't like, but he completely misses the point of this. Same with Starship Troopers and many conservatives being like, they love that movie, don't make it political when it is, of course, a satire of, like, a fascist system. And the same with things like Warhammer 40k, like Arch Warhammer saying, don't make it political, don't put politics into my Warhammer 40k, when the whole thing has been a political satire this whole time. But just like anti-SJWs, is a very nice link here as well, these guys kind of miss the point of the satire. So they love the Imperium, they miss the satire, and that's not political. The law of Warhammer, despite being political, isn't political. The political aspect is women and minorities both asking for more representation in the law of the universe and for also being treated better 
by community events. Just linking it back to the Dune thing again, just like how anti SJWs don't think the film is political, but Marvel's The Eternals is political for featuring a diverse cast. Because the use of the words like woke and political for just diversity is just a massive dog whistle. You're just basically saying, I don't want people who don't look like me to be in this universe. Anyone pushing for this stuff is just a communist who hates Western values or something like that. Then it's also clear a lot of 40K communities don't really have, I guess, the capacity to deal with stuff like that. Like you saw in Spain with a guy wearing that symbolism. Again, let me know if I'm wrong. It seems like you could have maybe not allowed him to play with people. And at the same time, their statement is so very defensive about it. It's clear that more guidance needs to be given. But you've got to appreciate that Games Workshop did come out and say, you know, the Imperium is satire. There's no place for hate. It's not meant to be a goal for society. So you guys should remember that stuff and we should work together to make this community more inclusive but it does also seem to me whenever you see like some awful conservative reactionary on youtube or reddit and stuff they always love 40k might just be a coincidence but you know i kind of think it's not but just like many communities 40k clearly has a problem with bigotry but of course i probably left this too late because i can see the comments down below if you like this stuff doesn't make you a bad person. If you like the Imperium and you have the miniatures of the Imperium, doesn't make you a bad person inherently. The same way that if you like the Empire and Star Wars and like the aesthetics and the cool technology, doesn't make you a bad person. But like many people have said, the marketing needs to be better because if you market this stuff as good versus evil and the good guys are mostly this human force, then it will be hard for a lot of people who maybe get into this stuff as children, then maybe read about the law later on and completely change their mind about this faction they've bought loads of stuff for. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you want to follow me on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram, if you want to join our communities, check out my Discord and my subreddit. And if you want to support my work, check out my Patreon. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.